Ladies and gentlemen, you have gathered here today to see and assist the delivery of the first power. There have come with incredible rapidity one electrical arm after another, so that in fact we ever respect civilization has been revolutionized. Constant, adequate, and low price power for the highly industrialized Niagara frontier. An outstanding engineering achievement in the whole modern industrial development of electricity. We're standing here on 2nd Street in Niagara Falls, New York, with the last remaining portion of the wall of the Niagara Falls Hydraulic Canal. Construction on this hydraulic canal began in 1853 to provide water to the mill district. Now, if you could imagine where I'm standing right now, would have been completely dug out as thousands of gallons of water would flow through underneath, barreling towards the mills. In 1882, it was determined that the water from that hydraulic canal could be used to power an electrical plant. They built an 1800 horsepower plant here at Sholkov. Then in 1898, it was upgraded to a 34,000 horsepower generating station. Meanwhile, the need for Niagara's hydropower was growing far beyond its borders. The city of Buffalo, New York was looking to electrify themselves for the 1901 Pan American Expo. There was just one small problem. The existing technology at the time, direct current, could only travel up to one mile. This required new ingenuity and new creativity. In the War of the Currents, Westinghouse and Nikola Tesla proved that alternating current could travel not only as far as Buffalo, but all the way to New York City. In 1895, the Edward Dean Adams Power Station was completed here in Niagara Falls, the first large-scale production of alternating current hydropower. And in 1896, that power was sent to Buffalo, New York. But the industrialization of Niagara Falls required more electricity. Between 1914 and 1924, Shulkoff Power Stations 3A, B, and C were constructed, collectively producing over 400,000 horsepower worth of electricity. Unfortunately, on June 7, 1956, tragedy would strike. That morning, water was noticed seeping into the back of Power Station 3. By 5 p.m., the gorge wall collapsed into the power plant, destroying two-thirds of its capacity. Unfortunately, one man died as a result of the crash. This left Niagara Falls severely without power as $100 million in damages were piling up. The ramifications of the Sholkoff disaster were massive and widespread. Millions of dollars in lost revenue and hundreds of lost jobs as factories were crippled from the lack of power. 
power had to be purchased at great expense from the Sir Adam Beck Power Generating Station in Canada. Meanwhile, a great battle arose between private industry and the state of New York to determine who would build a new power station. This was decided in 1957 when President Dwight Eisenhower signed the Niagara Redevelopment Act, demanding the immediate construction of a new Niagara Power Project. On January 30th, 1958, the Power Authority of the State of New York was officially granted its license for the Niagara Power Project. Construction began round the clock 24-7, 365 days a year on construction of two 4.3 mile long tunnels, two power plants, a four bay, and a massive reservoir. One of the most disputed portions of construction of the Niagara Power Project was the 1900 acre reservoir. Specifically, 1000 acres of land owned by the Tuscarora Nation. This land was to be seized by eminent domain in exchange for just compensation. However, the Tuscarora Nation argued that this land was inherently theirs as an expansion of their reservation. This went all the way up to the United States Supreme Court, who sided in favor with the Federal Powers Commission, stating that the expanded land could be purchased and used as part of the new power project. But finally, after three years and $800 million, over 7 million cubic yards of soil, rock, dirt, sweat, and tears, the Niagara Power Project was finally completed as 750,000 gallons of water per second flowed through those 4.3 mile long tunnels into the four bay, through the Lewiston pump generating plant and Robert Moses station. This power plant at the time was the largest power plant in the Western Hemisphere and is still the main supplier of electricity for the state of New York. <laughs>